Hello and welcome to Last Ditch Kits. We're here today to talk about the Pocket Survival Kit. The Pocket Survival Kit is a very small kit. Is it the end-all be-all? No, of course not. That's your big old bug-out kit that's probably hanging on a hook in your basement. Problem is, you may not be home when a balloon goes up. You may be at work, you may be on the road, you may be on vacation, we don't know where you may be. The Pocket Survival Pack has one purpose and one purpose alone, keeping you alive. And the way it does it is by being with you. The greatest kit in the world makes no sense whatsoever and does you no good whatsoever if it's not with you. But the Pocket Survivor, it can be. So how big is this kit? Well, about the size of a pack of cigarettes. So you can see it's about the same height as well, width, depth. I'll give or take a couple of millimeters in any given direction. First thing you'll notice is it's rather shiny. The reason for that is it's shrink wrapped, not just once, but twice. By double shrink wrapping the package, we're going to try to keep moisture out. Anywhere you may leave this kit in your pocket, purse, glove box, what have you, there's always a chance of residual moisture getting in. Is it good to 10,000 fathoms? No. However, it will keep general wetness out. First thing we have to do is get that plastic off. Now, to accomplish that, find yourself a sharp rock, or in my case, a set of car keys, and just give it a good rip. Once we accomplish the first rip, we're going to peel it off. Now, this is not going to be a nice, easy takeoff because it's on there quite well. As you can see, it's not going to come off all in one piece. I'm going to apologize for that. That just goes to show you how strong it is. Once we get it open, or out of the packaging, we can see what's inside. Now again, I'd like to recommend, once you receive your kits, leave the shrink wrap on. The whole point here is to waterproof the kit somewhat. By making it water resistant, the things inside will last longer. Don't open it up and play with it. If you have to open one up, buy two or three, open one and leave the other one sealed. I won't mind. Well, let's pop it open. First thing you notice, good strong metal can. And the first thing we see is a piece of paper. Now, this is a very important part of the kit. This piece of paper has suggestions, directions, knowledge. Knowledge is the most important thing in any survival situation. What kind of knowledge? Well, how to clean a squirrel, how to clean a rabbit, uh, how to make a snare, you know how to smoke deer meat. Not only how to make a snare, but where to put them. It's two-sided. On the other hand, how to make a knife utilizing things in this kit, uh, using the signal mirror that's included, or the mirror for signaling that's included. Fishing, making your own rod and bobber from things like a nice stout green stick for a rod and dry ones for bobbers. Water purification, uh, lots of details on that. P51 can opener and how to use it, that's included in the kit. And most importantly, this part at the bottom, this kit is not a toy. It's for emergency use only. We're not responsible for any problems or injuries stemming from improper use, especially true of water purification. Personally, I'm not a fan of using water purification tablets, uh, but you know what? If there's no other water, it'll work. So let's take a look inside. First thing you're going to notice, two wet naps. These are not because you might get your hands dirty. This is because you have a far more likely chance of getting an infection and that causing a serious problem than running into a bear or something else malicious in the wilderness. Uh, infections kill. Save it for that. Don't use it just because you think your hands are dirty. Use it because you've got a cut. Cuts are very common. They're going to be a problem. Next item in the kit, a plain old book of matches. I'm sorry we do not include a fancy magnesium fire starter. I always had trouble with those to be honest with you. But 20 matches. 20 fires if you build them right, and I hope you know how. Uh, the cover may vary depending on the kit and where I get them that week. Next up, water purification. This is chlorflock. Chlorflock, there are two in here. Chlorflock is used by the United States military. It's used by the International Red Cross. It's one of the best things out there for water purification. You notice there's some basic directions on the envelope. Uh, the far more detailed directions are in the kit on that paper I showed you at the beginning. One of these should purify a liter of water, two liters of water. Depends on temperature, however. Be aware that if it's under 40 degrees or so, uh, you need to use two for a liter. So wait till it gets warmer or use warmer water. Next up, needle and thread. You might tear your clothes. Please notice it's plain white cotton thread. Uh, we've all seen Rambo movies. We know what people do with this stuff. 
I don't recommend suturing yourself with this stuff. However, if I was bleeding out, you bet I would. Of course, there's still more inside. Two single edge razor blades. Nice cardboard to keep you from cutting yourself. Single edge razor blades have many, many uses. You can even turn them into a knife. Uh, the directions for that are on the sheet in the kit. How do you do that? Take a nice green stick, split it, or carve it if you've really got the time. Insert the razor blade into it, wire through the hole around the stick. You've got a basic knife. It's not a fighting knife. This is to skin that rabbit you got. How did you get that rabbit? The snare, of course. Now let's uh, bring out the wire. About 10 feet of snare wire. This wire is quite useful for a lot of things, but snares is number one. A squirrel is a meal. It's one of the best out there, as a matter of fact. It tastes like chicken. Did anyone else that everything tastes like chicken? Uh, this ball of wire, spool of wire, can be useful for many, many things. Making that knife I had mentioned earlier, although you can use fishing line for that as well. Or making snares. Directions on that sheet about how to make a snare, where to put a snare, how to get game into it, etc. Next up, a compass. Always useful. Hopefully you're heading somewhere. You may know where you're going. As long as you know where north is, you'll find your way. Uh, these are very, very small compasses, but they work just fine. They're used quite commonly in uh, schools, etc., the little 20 millimeter type. We also have a spool of 30 pound test line, about 20 feet. And if you can see in there, a couple of hooks as well. Two fishing hooks, 20 feet of uh, 30 pound test can catch a lot of fish. Fish is probably the easiest thing to get in a survival situation, assuming you're not in the middle of a city, of course. Uh, but if you have any kind of river or stream around, you find a nice green stick about as thick as your finger. Trim it up as well as you can. Tie one end of the string to the stick. Tie through the hook at the end. A barber slightly higher than the depth of the water. And find yourself some bait. Worms on the shore are usually the easiest. Uh, next up, aspirin. The brand may vary, by the way, depending on the kit. Again, depending on where I bought them that week. Uh, this is not in case you have a headache. Aspirin is a fever reducer. If you blow it and don't use those wet wipes and band-aids correctly and you end up with a bit of an infection, fever can hurt you real bad. Aspirin helps bring it down. Next up, two band-aids. Again, infection. You may notice I'm a bit of a nut on that. I firmly believe infection is a serious problem. When you get that small cut, use those uh, wet wipes to clean it up, get a band-aid on it, fight the infection. Uh, next, we're coming to the end here, a P-51 can opener. I love these things. Used them for a long time in the Army. For those too uh, young to remember them, this is what we had before we had MREs, because sea rations were in cans. This will open pretty much anything from a can of beefaroni to a number 10. Fishing and snaring rabbits and squirrels is wonderful. Finding a can of SpaghettiOs out in the wilderness, even better. And last but not least is our mirror. Now, the mirror is not a true signal mirror. It is mylar, won't break very easily, highly reflective surface that you can use for signaling. It seems to be a little dull, that's because it's got a film on it, which I'll peel off a bit of and give you a better idea of how shiny that is. It's not as good as a real signal mirror. If you have one, by all means use it. If you don't, it sure is better to have this one than nothing. And that, my friends, is your pocket survivor. The best survival kit out there is the one you have with you. Having that wonderful bug out pack full of food, water, extra clothes that's hanging in your basement right now is a wonderful thing to have if you're home when the balloon goes up. Otherwise, maybe you can't get home. So place one of these in your glove compartment, maybe in your workplace, in your pocket, in your friend's pockets, your spouse's purse or glove box, you have multiple cars, put one in each. Once again, the best kit is the one you have with you. We're Last Ditch Kits. We're available at www.lastditchkits.com. Uh, we have them in stock now, and we can ship them immediately. They are inexpensive for what you're getting, under $20 a piece, and even less if you buy them in quantity. You can buy one, two, three, or even ten at a time on our website with a significant discount the more you order. If you wish more than that, 
a large order for a group or for your friends or just to make sure you have a lot around, give us an email at the link provided on the web page and we'll get back to you with pricing for the quantity you may want. Once again, the best kit is the one you have with you. Thanks, have a great day, and good luck whatever may come.